إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All praise due to Allah, we praise him. And we ask his for assistance. We ask him for assistance and we ask him for forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our deeds. Whoever Allah guides, there is no one who can misguide them. And whoever Allah leaves to be misguided, there is no one who can guide them. By witness that none deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and that he has no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Bi-idhnillahi <laughs> ta'ala, uh, tonight we will continue with what we have previous begun, and that is the issue of the effect that the worship or the acts of worship should have on us because many people believe that prayer or giving charity or fasting, the effect that it has is just that the person becomes close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a righteous deed that benefits that person only in terms of it being an act of worship. So they get rewarded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's it. And we don't really think about the effect that it should have on us on our character, our manners, on different aspects of our life. Even though this is what we find in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we had mentioned, or we focused on the Salah, because we pray five times a day and we know that the Salah is the first pillar of Islam after the person enters the fold of Islam. And we mentioned that the Quran mentions how the prayer should prevent us from immorality, evil deeds, or evil actions. However, when we look, we find that most people, when they pray, they pray and they leave the prayer, and they just continue on with life, as it was before the salah. It doesn't really have an impact or effect on them. But rather, when we pray, we have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we leave the prayer, it should have some type of effect on us as it prevents us from these, de- these actions. And we also mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ, when he would face an important matter or a t- trial or a test or a challenge, he would go and pray. And also how the Sahaba ﷺ would do the same. And they would, when they were afflicted with something, they would go and pray. As we mentioned Ibn Abbas ﷺ, when he heard the death, or he was informed of the death of his brother, the first thing that he did was he went and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring some peace upon his heart, tranquility. And this is what the prayer should do. Many people face problems and they are, they find that they are, uh, in their hearts are hard and and they uh, are sad and so forth. And they go and see doctors and so forth. But how often does someone actually go and say, let me pray? Hopefully, I'll find some peace and some on this peace of the mind or the peace of the heart and so forth. But this was the Sahaba of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how they looked at the Salah. For this reason, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say to Bilal, Arihna biha ya Bilal. And he bring comfort to us through the prayer. So when it was time to pray, they would find this peace. And we find that people today, in many cases, when we hear the Adhan, it was time to pray, we think of it as a burden. It's time to pray. I have to go pray now. But rather, when we pray, we should find this type of peace. And it should be a form or a reason for us to relax more and find tranquility and so forth. So we did with the salah. And tonight we want to speak about fasting and charity. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, He says, Ya ladina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in this verse that he has prescribed fasting upon us like the previous nations to achieve taqwa. And again, when we talk about siyam or fasting, 
Many of us, the first thing that comes to our mind is the fact that we will be abstaining or we will not be eating and drinking for so many hours. And that's what we think about for the most part. And we may even go further to think that, alhamdulillah, if I fast, there is a great reward. We may have read some of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu And maybe that's the most that we think about it, when fasting. And However, when we look in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu or from the Quran, this verse that we mentioned, that there are other things that we should achieve or should be achieved when we fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That you may achieve taqwa. And we understand, generally speaking, the concept of taqwa, to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abstaining from sins, increasing our righteous deeds. But we take a closer look at the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forms a narration, he says, so the Prophet ﷺ is telling us in this narration about false speech or false statements or foul language, whatever things that we shouldn't be saying. And also when it comes to actions, things that we shouldn't be doing. So he says, whoever does not leave Qawl al-Zur, false actions, false speech. Qawl al-Zur is false actions. Whatever that may be, whatever that we shouldn't be saying comes under this statement. Wal-Amal bih. these are actions that we shouldn't be doing. He says, فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً Allah has no need for that person to leave off of eating and drinking. This means that the purpose or the reason why we are fasting is not to just not eat and drink. This is not the purpose, but rather there are greater benefits or things that we should achieve from this and that we should control what we say and what we do. So when we're fasting, we should be conscious of our statements more than we're normally conscious. So we should control what we say. And sometimes we find that during Ramadan, people are more conscious of what they say and what they do to a certain extent. However, this is something that should be throughout the year if we are fasting. And we find that fasting was a, one of the practices of the, the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba, they would fast throughout the week or throughout the month. As we know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us to fast on Monday and Thursday and to fast three months, uh, three days of the month, whether it's the 14th, 13th, 14th, and 15th, the white nights or the white not days or just any three days of the month. Now, if we think about this and think about what we should be doing when we are fasting and that it should help us control what we say. And many people, they have a problem with their tongue. They say anything and everything. And they react to people as well in any manner, any fashion. And maybe when they're fasting in Ramadan, they have more control to a certain extent. However, if we were to think about these benefits or these things that we are required from us when we're fasting, maybe we would fast even more to solve this problem. If you have a problem with your tongue and you think that when you are fasting it helps to control that, then this is something that you should do more often. You should fast more, why? Because you are more conscious of what you say. Generally speaking, we know that we should control our tongue. However, when we are fasting, we are more conscious. Being conscious of something is different than we're not conscious of that matter. So when we are fasting, this should make us more aware of what we say. So we shouldn't just say anything. Why? Because I'm fasting. I shouldn't just say anything. Person does something, I shouldn't react in that manner. As the other narration mentions, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, if a person insults you or he fights you, then you should, you should say to that person that I am fasting. And again, this is something that we are conscious of what we should be when we are fasting, but Again, in Ramadan, we find that people are more conscious of it again. So if someone 
insults you, someone calls your name, something says something foolish to you, or does something foolish, or tries to fight the person, or argue with them, the Prophet ﷺ said we should say that we are fasting, meaning that we shouldn't respond to this. And this is the real yani, challenge that we have, is to control what we say and what we do. You know, many people think that if you don't react to a certain thing, whether it's a statement or an action of a person, and you don't say anything back, then that's a sign of weakness. But actually, it's easy to respond to a person. Is that natural? Normally, if someone says something, you can easily respond to them, whatever you may say, or do something about it. But what's even more difficult is to control your tongue. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in other narration, he says, لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالصُّرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَ عَنْدَ الْغَضَبِ And he says that the strong person, or the person who people may say tough, is not the person who can wrestle people, who can fight back, but rather the person who control, who can control his anger. And this is, you'll find that people who are angry, when they try to control themselves, it's as if they're going to explode sometimes. And it's difficult for them to control themselves because this is more difficult than reacting. It's easy to react, to say something, but to control yourself is the real challenge. And it has nothing to do with being weak, as we may hear from people, but, as, but rather, this is the behavior of the believer, and this is what we're encouraged to do. And that's why this is one of the benefits that we get from when we are fasting, is that we control our reaction. The Prophet clearly states that if a person tries to fight you even, then you should say what, I am fasting. So if we are fasting more often, then maybe it will help us to control our reaction, how we react, self-control. And this is why during the month of Ramadan, if we are fasting properly, we should find this effect on us after the month of Ramadan. And a person who's fasting for one month and they're conscious of what they say, and what they do, then hopefully by the end of the month, they will find this effect. They will find the change in their attitude, how they respond to people, how they speak to people, and so forth. And if we continue to fast after Ramadan, then hopefully, inshallah, this will help us be more conscious of what we say and what we do because we are fasting. So we would remind ourselves, I shouldn't say this because I'm fasting. I shouldn't respond in this manner because I'm fasting. So these are some of the benefits that we get from uh, al-siyam. Also, when we are fasting, we have to understand that we are doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the same narration, he says, about fasting, that it is for, he says at the beginning of the hadith that all the actions the son of Adam, he gets rewarded 10 times, and, and they may be multiplied, multiplied to 700 times, except for siyam, for indeed it's for me. Meaning that the reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't mention the reward for the person who was fasting. And the scholars mentioned that because it's a form of patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَى الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ That those who are patient, they will get their reward fully or in full, without be accountable, without being accounted, meaning that there is no limit to the reward. So fasting is a form of patience. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this hadith that he will reward us or those who fast. So we're conscious of this meaning as well, that the only deed that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we don't know the effect or we don't know the reward of it is fasting. And then he, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions this hadith, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَدْعَوْ شَهْوَةَ وَطْعَامَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِ that the person who is fasting, he leaves his desires and he leaves eating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the reward is so great. So when we are fasting, we think of this, that we are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How often do we think about this? And this is something that Allah has mentioned that we are leaving the food and drinking or whatever we're doing, our desires, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're conscious of this meaning it would help us fast, it would be easy for us. Rather than thinking about 
the concept or the fact that I'm not eating, I'm not drinking for so many hours, which is what we think about when we think about fasting, but rather we should think about the other meanings or these, uh, يعني, we should contemplate more on these acts of worship and the benefits that they should bring to us. And this fasting is one of them. Also, a brief one to mention, also charity, sadaqah. And again, when we ask people or we remind people of giving charity, the first thing that comes to our mind is that I have this money or this wealth, I do not want to give it up. Yeah, and I've, I've worked hard for it, for example, if you have. Or it's my wealth, why should I give it to other people? Why should I share it with others? But we forget that this blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that he granted, he gave to us. It's Allah's wealth. And he is the one who blessed us with giving it to us. And what, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Ya amanu anfiqu mimma razaqanakum. Or you believe anfiqu, give or na'am, give that which we provided you with. And then he says, من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول ربي لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب. Before death comes to one of you and you say, oh my Lord, give me more time so that I can what? قل ربي لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكون من الصالحين. So I can give charity and be from the righteous. So the scholar of Islam mentioned that sadaqah, charity, is one of the actions, one of the few things that a person in the hereafter would wish that they can come back to this dunya to give, to give charity, because of the great reward of it. Now again, if we're conscious of the fact that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this great reward, it will be easier for us to give. And it would help us with one of the sicknesses of people that they are stingy, they are selfish. Giving charity helps you get rid of this sickness or this problem. Because you have the concept, you understand the concept of giving others. And we train our kids and so forth. The same thing, in the same fashion, the same manner of sharing with others. So understand that this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he can remove at any minute, any second. Do not think that the wealth that you have is something that you are given because you worked hard for it. No, these are means and reasons. However, there are many people who have worked harder, longer hours maybe even. However, they won't give it this wealth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He blessed you with this. So you have to understand that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you are giving this wealth, you are just giving something back. Not only that, but we are encouraged to give because this is something that will benefit us in hereafter. Yeah, and when we give charity, we always think that we are losing something. I am giving away something. I will not benefit anything from it. And that's, that's why I should hold on to it. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, مَا, نص, ما نقص مال من صدق يعني that the wealth that we give does not, is, it doesn't decrease. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala he blesses this wealth. And that's why in the verse Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala he says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ هُوَ خَيْرًا وَأَعْظَمَ أَجْرًا That which you give or you put for, forth, you put for the hereafter, the good that you put forward or you put forth from the good that that which you put forward which is good for and you do it for yourselves meaning that you benefit from it tajiduhu indallahi wa khayran you will find it with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and the reward is greater and this means that when we give something for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will find it in the hereafter the benefit is greater if we understood this, it will be easy again for us to give because we find another narration that Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet came one day to his house, and I think it was Aisha, one of his wives, and he asked them about a lamb that was given to them as a gift. So they had given it in charity, all of it except for the thigh. So when the Prophet he asked him about it, they said to him that we have given it all except for this part of the, the uh, lamb, and the thigh of it, because the Prophet used to like this part. However, the Prophet وسلم, he corrected the statement and he said that you have given, you have kept, 
So basically, he, they said to him, the only thing that's remaining is this time. So he said, what's remaining in reality is all of it except for the thigh. What's remaining in reality is the whole animal, the whole lamb, except for the thigh. Meaning that what we have given in charity is actually what's left behind for us, for our benefit. Now, if you think about an investment, for example, or something, if someone says to you, if you invest $1,000 or whatever, and five years from now, you will find that it's increased, and you will get the profit, let's say 100% or whatever, 100000 in return. Now, most people will not think twice. They will give these people this money, this wealth, because of something they believe they will get in return. It's greater. I can benefit from this in the future. So they're not thinking that they're actually giving away this wealth, but rather it's an investment. Okay? Now, again, with sadaqah, if we realize this meaning, then it will be easier for us, because this is the wealth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned, and when we give Actually, this is something that will benefit us in the hereafter. Because what we give, and we think of giving away, actually, this is what we are saving for ourselves in the hereafter. So you're benefiting yourself before anyone else when you give charity. You benefit yourself before, any, before anyone else. And that's why in the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا He says, take from their wealth a sadaqa, a charity, you will, that will what? تُطَهِّرُهُمْ بِهَا وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ you, you will purify them with it and you will make zakah, tazkiyah. These two words are similar to a certain extent, meaning that this is a purification for our sins. We give sadaqah. And also the sadaqah is a means of increasing our wealth. So the person who gives sadaqah actually benefits from this charity to begin with. And also, it's a blessing in his wealth, if he understood this. And that's why people who have wealth and who give a lot of sadaqah, who understand this concept, you will find that it's easy for them to give. And this is why we find the Prophet ﷺ and his wives and the companions, they gave and gave and gave. And then they think about it, to the extent that the man said that the Prophet ﷺ, he gives the giving of a person who does not fear poverty, meaning that he has wealth and he's giving, he gives everything away. And mostly when they give away, they're thinking, how can I replace this? How am I, going, how am I going to make this money back? And when this man saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the way he gave, he gave the way that a person who doesn't care, he doesn't, he's not conscious, he's not worried about this wealth. He's not worried about poverty. I'm not gonna have money tomorrow. Well, but he gave more, why? Because he understood, he understood that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will bless this wealth. And the Sahaba anhum the same. And we find many stories of them giving or the wives of the Prophet and one sitting all of what they have or what they had. So sadaqah, if we really understand it and understand the impact and effect it has on us, that it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this wealth is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, purification for our sins, it's a form of thinking of others also to soften the hearts. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said also in the hadith that if you want to soften your heart, then feed the poor. Feed the poor. Meaning that this is a means to soften our hearts as well. So giving charity, giving to others also softens our hearts. And this is something that we all yeah, and it's a challenge for all of us that we, our hearts are not soft. So giving charity also, as we mentioned, is a means of softening the heart and bringing us close to, to, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it helps us to think about others and appreciate what we have, especially when we understand that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're just giving something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and entrusted us with and it's not Yani something that we actually own, but rather it's something that Allah has given to us and He may take it from us as well. So we should teach ourselves, our families, these concepts to understand these meanings when it comes to sadaqah and also when it comes to fasting to remind ourselves that this should actually help us on a personal level with our character, our manners and so forth. 
And then hopefully the society as a whole, as we know that the society is made up, was formed of people, individuals, and if they themselves re change and reform themselves and rectify their affairs, then this, the society as a whole will change with Allah Ta'ala. We stop here, inshallah, subhanakallah, bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilaha ilanta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa jazakumullahu khayra.